Hello, my name is Mrs. Bartholomew Tetley Jones, and I am here to present to you a fantastic experience the reading and performance of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, brought to you by Riverside Unified School District's Visual and Performing Arts Department. Enjoy. <clears throat> Is this your food? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just so very hungry. It's okay? Oh, we're good. Good, I'll take another sip of tea then. Mm, it's very nice. Earl Grey? I thought so. I have an eye, an ear, a tongue for these things. It's a copy of Alice in Wonderland. One of my favorite books, I must say. Where to begin, though? How about chapter seven? You know, the mad tea party? It's good with you? Okay, great. Let's find it in here somewhere. Ah, yes, here we are. Chapter seven, a mad tea party. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. A Dormouse was sitting between them fast asleep and the other two were using it as a cushion, resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. Very uncomfortable for the Dormouse, thought Alice, uh, only as it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. Uh, no room! No room! They cried out when they saw Alice coming. Uh, there's plenty of room, said Alice indignantly. And she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. Have some wine, the March Hare said in an encouraging tone. Alice looked all around the table, but there was nothing on it but tea. Oh, I don't see any wine, she remarked. There isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it, said Alice angrily. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited, said the March Hare. I didn't know it was your table, said Alice. It's laid for a great many more than three. Uh, your hair wants cutting, said the Hatter. He had been looking at Alice for some time with great curiosity, and this was his first speech. You should learn not to make personal remarks, Alice said with some severity. It's very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide upon hearing this, but all he said was, why is the raven like a riding desk? Oh, come, we shall have some fun now, thought Alice. I'm glad they've begun asking riddles. I believe I can guess that, she added aloud. Do you mean that you think you can find out the answer to it? Said the March Hare. Exactly so, said Alice. Then you should say what you mean, the March Hare continued. I do. Alice hastily replied. At least, I, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. And not the same thing in a bit, said the Hatter. Uh, why, 
You might just as well say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. You might as well just say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. You might as well just say, added the Dormouse, who seemed to be talking in his sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It, it is the same thing with you, said the Hatter. And here the conversation dropped, and the party sat silent for a minute while Alice thought over all she could remember about ravens at writing desks. Which wasn't much. The Hatter was the first to break the silence. What day of the month is it? he said, turning to Alice. He had taken his watch out of his pocket and was looking at it uneasily, shaking it every now and then and holding it to his ear. Alice considered a little and she said, uh, the fourth. Two days wrong, sighed the Hatter. I told you butter wouldn't suit the works, he added, looking angrily at the March Hare. It was the, the best butter, the March Hare meekly replied. Yes, but some crumbs must have gotten as well, the Hatter grumbled. Uh, you shouldn't have put it in with the bread knife. The March Hare took the watch and looked at it gloomily. Then he dipped it into his cup of tea and looked at it again. But he could think of nothing better to say than his first remark. It was the best butter, you know. Alice had been looking over his shoulder with some curiosity. What a funny watch, she remarked. It tells the day of the month, and it doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it? muttered the Hatter. Does your watch tell you what year it is? Of course not, Alice replied very readily. But that's because it stays the same year for such a long time together. Which is just the case with mine, said the Hatter. Alice felt dreadfully puzzled. The Hatter's remarks seemed to her to have no sort of meaning, and yet it was certainly English. I don't quite understand you, she said as politely as she could. The Dormouse is asleep again, said the Hatter, and he poured a little hot tea onto its nose. The Dormouse shook its head impatiently and said, without opening its eyes, Of course, of course. Uh, just what I was going to remark myself. <laughs> Have you guessed the riddle yet? The Hatter said, turning to Alice again. Uh, uh, no, I give it up, Alice replied. Uh, what's the answer? <sighs> I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. I think you might do something better with the time, she said, than to waste it in asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, said the Hatter, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. Uh, I don't know what you mean, said Alice. Of course you don't, the Hatter said, tossing his head contemptuously. I dare say... You've never even spoken to time. Uh, perhaps not, Alice cautiously replied. But I know I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, that accounts for it, said the Hatter. He won't stand the beating. Now, if you only kept on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you liked with the clock. For instance... Uh, suppose it were nine o'clock in the morning. Just time to begin lessons. Uh, you'd only have to whisper a hint to time, and round goes the clock in a twinkling. Half past one. Time for dinner. Only I wish it was, the March Hare said to itself in a whisper. That would be grand, certainly, said Alice thoughtfully. But then I shouldn't be hungry for it, you know? Uh, not at first, perhaps, said the Hatter. But you could keep it to half past one for as long as you liked. Is that the way you manage? Alice asked. The Hatter shook his head mournfully. 
Not I, he replied. Oh, we quarreled last March, just before he went mad, you know, pointing with his teaspoon at the March Hare. It was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts, and I had to sing, Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. Well, uh, you know the song, perhaps. Uh, I've heard something like it, Alice said. Uh, it goes on, you know, the Hatter continued, in this way. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, 